On 27 and 28 February 2018, the Zimbabwe Mining Investment Conference was held at the Mikkels Hotel in Harare, Zimbabwe. The conference was proudly sponsored by Africa Comb Fields and Liberation Mining. The oversubscribed event brought together stakeholders in the mining sector, ranging from private enterprises and government officials to developmental agencies such as the World Bank and International Finance Corporation. Topics of discussion included adjustments and changes to the existing mining laws that govern the industry, as well as issues to do with the financing of the capital-intensive sector. Matters to do with the socio-economic contributions of the industry were also discussed at length. We have traveled the road. We have seen some ups and downs. What have been challenging uh, have been capital. Also what has been challenging has been the skills. And what has been challenging has been the regulatory framework in the country. Uh, that posed a number of challenges over the number of years. But I'm happy to say that uh, we hold our own. And we have been able to find each other with the regulatory authorities. And uh, we have proven that uh, even if it appears difficult, if you sit down and find each other again to be able to do business. We started Zim Zimpla started in 2001. Uh, during the time that the rent reform was also taking place and uh, progressed during the time of the indigenization issues when they were quite hot, but has been largely very successful. And we believe that uh, uh, if you focus on your key business and you focus on the key issues at hand and you discuss and negotiate where it is necessary, you can still be able to do business in Zimbabwe. The new dispensation we have brings a lot of hope and also a lot of opportunities because it's now even much better and we see ourselves much better placed having come all the way. Yeah, I mean, we came here as an investor last year in uh, July for the first vid visit and uh, we started operations, uh, not, not quite operations, but uh, developing of the mine in September. So first excavation started in September and now we are fully uh, ready for production. On 23, the ministry has finally gazetted our license. Therefore, we, um, we lack only a couple of other licenses. One is EMA and the other one is export license. But we see that the export license will come out in three days as opposed to the process before. Uh, which was taken a bit more time. So, well, in, uh, you know, we see some changes to the better Zimbabwe now, but uh, there is still a long way to go uh, in regulatory frameworks, in re I mean, everywhere in development. And we mining coal, uh, in coal business, the main challenge is uh, logistics and you know railways. We we targeting uh, export markets, therefore we need uh, to tackle the issue of railways, which we already working on. So basically, we love the country. We ready to continue developing our existing mine, and we're looking for other projects, uh, chrome, gold, or platinum, uh, any, any other projects. So we're ready to invest to this country and help this country to prosper. I'm sure those who are new to Zimbabwe, you are asking yourselves, how have these people been operating? Uh, I listened to the deputy governor speaking about challenges of foreign currency, etc., etc. But uh, Zimbabwe remains a, a very attractive investment destination. And in our case, uh, we are an old mining company. We were incorporated in 1956. So we have got quite a number of low hanging fruits in our company. The first one being uh, coal. We have a well-explored coal resource, which has delineated 1.3 billion tons of ore, uh, coal ore, 
and there is potential for us to set up a mind-to-mouth power station of up to 2,800 megawatts. We have decided to do that in phases of 700 megawatts each. Uh, we have enough coal to fire a 10,000 megawatt power station for over 40 years. And there is more scope for us to do more exploration on our ground. I'm not involved with the chamber at the moment, but I do see the chamber addressing these issues. And I hear reports of the Ministry of Mines, the Ministry of Finance responding uh, positively to the various approaches that are being made. And as I said earlier, what we need to see now is the implementation. The mineral resources of Zimbabwe have not been fully exploited. We've developed the platinum side very well and the platinum mines have achieved a, a lot of success. We haven't seen the gold mining uh, sector develop as it should. Uh, there's been some success, I think, in the chrome, but we have enormous opportunity in chrome and gold. I also think of nickel. We, we have good nickel resources and when you look at the, the future metals that are going to be required for the electric vehicles, etc., nickel plays an important part. And I think we need to um, promote our nickel production in this country quite substantially. So there are many opportunities that we see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the sector, in the asbestos, uh, in um, lithium, uh, chromium sector. And in conclusion, the corporation is ready to provide marketing and selling services to the mining sector, particularly given the much anticipated growth under the new dispensation. We are hoping very much that uh, at least one of our projects that we've actually fully developed into a mine already uh, is going to be an early beneficiary of the change in the dispensation and uh, that we're going to be able to take a mine and really fund it properly uh, on the basis of a changed ownership. That's the RHA Tungsten mine. Okay. Um, we invested in Zimbabwe first in 2008 and uh, we've developed that mine fully. Uh, we've invested about, I suppose, about 25, 26 million dollars into that mine. Um, and all of that was done on the basis of us only having 49%. Um, the mine is virtually fully developed. It's very, very close to being able to operate profitably. Uh, but it really has got to a stage where at 49% you just keep, can't keep on funding. So we've had various negotiations, discussions, there's a new dispensation in the country, which is great. We've got wonderful support coming from the Minister of Mines, very supportive. Uh, the Indigenisation Economic Empowerment guys are on board and it's a process. And we're hoping to see that resolved pretty quickly. Now we're listed on the London um, Stock Exchange in the AIM market. Uh, the true cost of capital can only be measured in looking at the dilution that you endure uh, in, in, your, in your market, in your shares, in your shares in issue. Um, and, and that's become, uh, it's become an inordinately expensive exercise. Um, as good as the projects may be, um, investors don't like seeing dilution, they don't like seeing continuous uh, funds being raised, particularly into a jurisdiction that up until now has had a lot of question marks associated with it. Well, I think in terms of our main projects here in Zimbabwe at the moment, um, and I'm going to move slightly onto the lithium project, for example, I think our lithium project is an absolute world-class project. Um, we've, uh, we've declared maiden resources, we're uh, an advanced exploration, we have a little bit more drilling to do, uh, we, we anticipate with proper funding to see a feasibility study completed uh, towards the end of this year. Um, all things are good and the return, the, cap the, the actual investment return uh, that investors could expect from that project is, is important, it's an exception. Right, so Prospect Resources, we originally started, our idea was to combine Zimbabwean skills and projects with the Australian capital markets through a, through a listed vehicle. And we are fast changing into an African energy minerals company. Our focus is currently on lithium, the Arcadia project, obviously. 
but we also have uh, several other minerals that we are starting to do work on. Firstly, with a company. So the African team is all in country uh, with all our projects, all of our exploration, design, engineering, etc. That is all happening in country. So we've put together a very strong team focusing on the discovery, proving, building and operating of various mining projects. And the, that is backed up with a very small focused Australian team. And their, their job is solely to manage investor relations, corporate governance and raise money for us to have fun with out here. All right, so our flagship project is the Arcadia Lithium project, which is currently the sixth biggest hard rock uh, jaw compliant hard rock lithium deposit in the world. We have at the present moment a seven year offtake agreement signed with the Sinomine Group out of China. They have a strong uh, presence in Zimbabwe, Zambia, and the DRC. So it's a very good fit for us. Uh, obviously, this agreement is subject to a few conditions which we are working with presently. And within that agreement, very significantly, we have the opportunity to divert part of that offtake back into a lithium carbonate plant. In a very good location for all of you in the mining world to have a deposit of this size, 35 kilometers from where we sit here, we could be there in under an hour very easily along a tar road and a short, short dirt road. It's got excellent infrastructure, there's good water, there's power close by, and obviously proximity to Harare is, is fantastic for, for workers and uh, services. We do have the offtake agreement in place. We have an ongoing or definitive uh, feasibility study and all, all the legal documentation that surrounds that. Uh, sort of topically, we are in negotiating with MMCZ on that offtake agreement uh, because that is obviously not a standard, op standard uh, deal. Our intention is to break ground in uh, the first half of this year and we'll have our operating mine within 14 months thereafter. As raising finance for large-scale capital expenditure has been difficult to do in Zimbabwe, global financial institutions, funds and capital market representatives from London and Johannesburg came to the conference. They shared key information and detail that global financiers are looking to find out about Zimbabwe. Uh, the first is availability of geological and mining data uh, in as detail as possible. What are the opportunities um, and then having the information in as um, the technical information in as much detail as possible and having a database of that. The second set of information is regarding all the laws um, and tariffs that uh, regulate the mining industry. So that relates to all the taxes, whether it's local, national, all the fees to various agencies that need to be paid, all the um, the shareholdings that's required by the government or for the locals to have versus the international investors. To, to have a clear view of all the economics that are imposed on investors from the government. The legal framework. The legal framework. To have that set of information. And the third uh, information that's quite relevant and you should have is everything related to the infrastructure not just roads and rail and ports, but also availability of electricity, availability of water. Um, and then lastly, I would say that all the other aspects that uh, impact investment. So the ease of convertibility of uh, currency, ease of repatriation of um, profits, um, all the administrative uh, requirements for getting permitting, whether it's for exploration or exploitation or exports. So all of those, uh, in, that set of data needs to be also made available. So I think uh, transparency is key and having all the relevant information at the, for the investors is gonna be crucial. But also it's also the content itself. So to the extent that, and I know that the government is now, there's a new government in place, they're going through the process of new legislations. We have to really see what those legislations are going to be um, and how the framework will be made permanent 
to give assurance to investors that it's not going to change again. So consistency, consistency and permanency of it. Um, so th there could be like favorable legislation, but but investors in mining, as you know, mining projects from the time you find a resource until you start production could take as ma as many as ten years. So uh, they they want to be sure that even if there is a favorable policy that they can rely on it on a more permanent basis. So content is crucial. Um, it's not good enough to say that we are passing legislation and we are, we are uh, moving in the right direction. Um, it's also important to see how it compares to other jurisdictions, the laws that are being put in place. Um, mining is a very competitive space and there are a lot of good jurisdictions uh, both in Africa and outside of Africa uh, with competitive uh, legal frameworks and if you're not competitive enough compared to others money would flow there and then your asset has to be of extremely superior quality to then justify regulations that are uh, less attractive compared to others but as long as your your mining assets the grades and so on are average let's say one to two grams per ton in in gold or one to two percent uh, in grade in copper or you know, one percent grade in uh, hard rock lithium. These are not. These are let's say average grades. Then your uh, framework has to compare well with other jurisdictions. Otherwise, the economics won't stack up competitively. Beneficia beneficiation in general is a good idea. The only issue about beneficiation is the costs uh, involved and the capital cost and the market. So it has to be logical. You can't just beneficiate because uh, you want to retain uh, the margin on the, on, the, on, the mineral. on the mineral because the costs are important. So for example, a lot of, in a lot of minerals, when you start to beneficiate the concentrate, you need a lot of electricity. If there is an electricity shortage and electricity is expensive, then the cost of production will be high. So it's true that you can sell at a higher price a beneficiated product, but if the economics of it is not going to be there, you're not going to be profitable. And again, you're in a competitive situation. So when you're making ferrochrome here, and, there's, and Malaysia can also do ferrochromes, uh, but because they have very cheap electricity, the cost of production is much lower there than here. Why would an investor invest here um, and have a much lower margin than if they can do exactly the same thing in Malaysia, including the co transport cost of the concentrate. So uh, when you're thinking about beneficiation, you have to look at all the drivers of the cost and be sure that, that you are competitive along the entire cost structure. After a highly successful first day, day two was officially opened by the Vice President of Zimbabwe, Honorable Retired General Chiwenga. It is pleasing to note that this conference brings together potential investors and financiers, local and international mining experts, and senior government officials to share and discuss pertinent issues on the growth and development trajectory of the mining sector in Zimbabwe. Indeed, it is commendable that we are gathered here today to collectively explore, uh, explore and deliberate on the huge mining investment opportunities that Zimbabwe offers. The mining sector remains critical to the economic development of Zimbabwe. The sector continues to be a major foreign currency earner and has the potential to become the pillar for economic growth through value addition and beneficiation. The Vice President emphasized that it is incumbent on the government of Zimbabwe to ensure that the high-level investment discussions find tangible impact on the nation's ordinary citizens. We attract at the higher level 
the, the investment, it comes into Zimbabwe. But investment translates into jobs. Because we, we're talking of creation of wealth. It translates into jobs, but also translates into, at the very basic levels, standards of living of people. It translates into roads, infrastructure is then created. Because where, where a mind is set, there's need for access. There is need for, for access even to, to water. So it means all these facilities, the utilities that are taking that, that are headed towards a mine or that are there created to sustain a mine, effectively translate also into utilities available for the local communities. So it very well could mean for some community that when the mine is set up, they now have all of a sudden electricity coming close to them. They have water coming close to them. They have roads coming close to them. There's employment creation coming to them. So, so all these, these initiatives um, mean a lot in terms of the standard of living of the ordinary Zimbabwe. Look, it is a tension, and maybe it's a healthy tension. It's also not only a tension in this part of the world. I mean, it's also in um, South America, you get a lot of that. In Asia, Papua New Guinea, there are always those kind of tensions between um, the financiers, look, let's call it, look at the bottom line, versus the communities, the environments in which they live. So let's get a couple of principles clear. Number one, the communities are the people that have to live in that area. For that reason, they don't only have an important role, they have a critical role in any decisions. So I think we must put that, that in. I think that the modern mining world has changed in this in the last 20 years, that there's a much greater appreciation for the need to actually look after what you call the deep social structure, the deep social requirements, the, the consultations, the involvement of communities. This is only fair. Paying rent is fair. So if we can take that and put it aside and say we agree fully on that and that, that this is a healthy tension, then I'll come back to policy certainty. As long as people are clear about that policy, as long as that policy is sustainable in terms of what it demands, in terms of the royalty that you speak of, I mean if you have a 20% royalty, immediately you drive away funding. If you have a 1%, well maybe, you know, depending on the mineral that you are talking about. So I think policy certainty around this is important after the need that this balance must be had and secondly that the tension is actually not a bad thing but potentially a good thing because it brings equitable results on both sides of the table. Liberation Mining, a Russian finance enterprise operating in Zimbabwe, is one of the large-scale investors into the sector leading efforts to ensure broad-based communal benefits. We came to Zimbabwe just last year. Uh, we came to Zimbabwe six months ago, back in August, when we uh, signed our papers to be uh, to become the new investors for a company called Liberation Mining that hold the uh, special grant 4977 um, for coal production. Uh, we uh, were very practical investors. We're a global group of companies that are currently mining 35 million tons of uh, coal globally. We only deal with high quality coal uh, products. We don't, we're not really into the thermal coal. Um, we also do the ferronical business in Indonesia. We, uh, we, we manage various assets in Australia. And basically that's how we entered Africa by Zimbabwe six months ago. Um, in terms of the steps, right, we have uh, got the, uh, the contractors on board to start, to start practically to start mining operations back in the last September. So over the last five months, we managed to get the, uh, uh, around 150 people on board, of which 115 people are local community. Those are no guys from Hwangi, those are guys from, uh, from Gwai and Hankama, from the local community. Uh, to confirm that you know, it makes perfect sense to hire the people who actually live in the, in the area, in, in the region. Um, so from that perspective, we found Zimbabwe a um, very welcoming country. We found that uh, uh, the literacy of people is super high. Uh, we found that various people, even non mining guys, like drivers and waiters and the other people, are happy to they're happy to work, they're happy to collaborate, they're happy to study and learn. Uh, we found that there is a school of mines uh, that was sponsored by the previous liberation mine basically team. Yes. Um, uh, school of mines guys were uh, 10 graduates. We managed to get eight already on board. 
in the last uh, five months. And um, those guys are professional guys. Uh, people are very helpful. Um, you know what we did is we basically, we use the, everywhere we're starting the business globally, we're using the bottom up approach and, and, and that's pretty much it, honestly. Uh, we have a representative office in Harare, but we stick to a conviction that the key office and the key operations are on the ground. That's why I'm, since August, I'm on the ground. I'm in the mine all the time, sunburned and etc. etc. I literally came from the mine last night, uh, still getting messages on everything happening there. From that perspective, um, the key people who may like your operation or may dislike your operation are the local community people. These are the key people, right? You can have all the blessings from the ministries and, uh, and, and various authorities, which is important, uh, but if the local community does not like you, uh, nothing will happen. That's why we always focus, we, we make sure that there is a presence of ourselves to meet the legislation of the, uh, of the, of the, of the country we present in. But the most important thing is to make sure that the local people are happy. That is the most important thing. Uh, not just saying as, as other companies say, let's do some vegetable farming, etc., etc. We did the practical steps. We hired 115 local people. We, uh, we renovated the electricity lines. It's the, 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 after seven years, the electricity is back uh, in, the, in the village of Hankano 1 to the school. Uh, we did the roads. Uh, we had, uh, returned the water because the boreholes were stuck with some mud and dust. And uh, we're, we're, we're now actually, we are, we're building a, a new primary and secondary school for the, uh, for the area. We, we see a lot of synergies coming through. For starters, a lot of, of the supplies that were going into the industry, into the mining subsector, were imports. But as things tend, we also have suppliers, of course, potential suppliers. So we, we see a rejuvenation of industry through the multiplier effect. Not just directly related to mining, but to all the other support sectors that are close to the mining subsector. Local stakeholders in the mining industry were pleased with the platform offered by the conference as it allowed them to engage with global stakeholders. They are excited by the potential synergies. A great event. Um, we needed this long overdue. Um, and we need more of this so that we get exposure to the outside world. But in summer, again, great event. The outside world coming to visit us uh, with positive intent with interest in, in what we have in the country. Uh, I saw a lot, just walking around the building, I saw a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions in the foyer. Um, for me, that is where the real discussions take place. What happens in the auditorium is one thing, but when you see people pulling each other aside and having conversations, that's, that's, that's where you you start getting a feel that uh, people are engaging. Um, some of us made our deals before the conference, uh, but um, there was more intensity um, after and during and after the, 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 the uh, presentations in terms of deals being, uh, being made. As global investors are looking back into the Zimbabwean mining industry, locally educated mining professionals currently based in foreign countries are also seeing the potential to come back and to contribute to their home country. As I speak, we, 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 we have a, 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 a social network uh, platform. All the mining engineers uh, yeah, who graduated from the University of Zimbabwe, we know where we are in our frustrations and one of them is just you know working on contract and you are not sure of your future and you know the reason why we 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 we, we participated or we qualified in mining engineering is because we wanted to help our country you know the unfortunate thing is uh, when when we graduated when we completed the University of Zimbabwe was it was affected yeah. so everything went silent but during our, 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 our training, yes, they were trying to, actually it was one of the, the government was actually targeting that to actually uphold or to adhere to the Sustainable Development Goal on Gender Equality and Women Empowerment. 
But unfortunately, because of that disturbance which happened, and the main focus was shifted on the agriculture land and farm and whatever, and everyone was popped out. It was during a time when Mine we were, sort of subsided. yeah. So everything was just thrown off. But eventually, we graduated, and we are saying, no, guys, we were not recognized, not because we didn't want to, but we understand there was an uphill. A, 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 a commotion, so now we are back to organize us. If the government puts together police frameworks, as the, if the legal uh, uh, framework is stable, and I know investors they are flocking, but right now they are just waiting. It's just the political situation. If it's stabilized and we are sure, we are certain, and then we can move back with our families. At the conclusion of the last day of the conference, feedback from attendants, government representatives and conference sponsors reflected resounding satisfaction. There is eager anticipation for next year's conference. Well, firstly, uh, I must say uh, I'm very much touched with the turnout, uh, large turnout uh, to, to this endeavor. And uh, I'm sure uh, you notice from yesterday, even today, people, some people were standing, they could get seats. And what that, what that means is the next endeavor of we should, you know, provide for a bigger number of people. But more so, the level of uh, excitement, the level of enthusiasm, the level of interest in um, being part of the development of the Zimbabwe mining sector, it's very uh, encouraging. When we were asked to participate as sponsors for the conference, I was a little apprehensive initially uh, because it was at a time when the new dispensation just emerged. Uh, we were not certain as to what the outcome of the sponsorship would reveal. So our expectations were not too high. Our expectations were limited um, because we know that the mining industry here is fairly conservative and we were uncertain as to whether investors would actually want to come and learn more about Zimbabwe. Um, in the last two days, um, we have learned that the attendance was in excess of 